research program has got five key projects. Two of them are looking at some fairly fundamental gaps in our basic knowledge when it comes to these relationships. The first one is um, taking northern basin fish species and looking at their diets and trying to understand their diets relative to what's in the environment a little bit better. Surprisingly, we don't know very much about what larval fish eat anywhere across the basin and we know virtually nothing at all about northern basin species. Um, so that's gonna fill in some critical knowledge gaps for us. The second project is starting to actually look at that basic relationship between how much food is there, what the temperature is and how quickly fish grow. The third project really concerns the spatial patterns of food and temperature, so there's a strong linkage between that laboratory work and what we're going to be doing uh, out in the field. So we're basically looking at how food density varies across different areas in the landscape and how temperature varies in those areas as well. And we hopefully will be able to determine at the end of that what sorts of areas in the landscape will be potentially very important for successful fish recruitment. So the last two projects are concerned with movement and dispersal. The first one is a smaller scale project and that's really looking at movement and retention at a smaller scale. That project is going to be manipulating flow and releasing larvae, also releasing passive particles and looking at how the patterns of dispersal and retention are altered depending on the amount of flow that's going down a reach. So it may be that larvae at low flows are quite easily able to settle out into suitable habitats, but once the flow gets high, then they lose that ability and they just get washed straight through the reach. And the final project is really going up to a very large spatial scale. It's looking at movement patterns and how important those are for species um, at a basin-wide scale. So there are a couple of species, such as golden perch and silver perch, whose populations potentially operate at basin-wide scales. So you may get a spawning event um, in one part of the basin, and because these fish move around the landscape quite easily, then that might translate into a recruitment event somewhere else and then the adults might then move somewhere else. So it's really important for species which operate over large spatial scales to understand the relationship between flow and connectivity and how that influences those really large scale processes for species which need it.